Filmmaking isn't always about slapping asses and slamming Cadillac doors. Sometimes you have to review lights. Let's get started. Hi, I'm James Powers, freelance DP and gaffer. Today we are looking at these aperture lights. We have the 300D Mark II that retails for about $1,100 and the newer Aperture 300X that you can find for $1,200. I'm here to look at how the 300X works and what makes it different. And then I'd like to test these lights in tungsten mode. And what I mean by that is I would like to set the 300X to tungsten at full brightness and compare that source to the 300D Mark II after you gel it with CTO or orange gel to make this feel like a tungsten light source. I'd like to then look at the color accuracy and light output of both those lamps. And then finally, I wanna answer the question, who is the 300X for? So let's find out. Now, what makes the 300X unique is that it is a bicolor single source light. If you remove the front optical element, which I do not recommend, you will find a series of warm and cool LED chips. Now that alone isn't unique. Cheaper versions of the 300X also do that. What makes the 300X special is the light gets pushed through that optical element and the quality of light is very favorable. You get this clean, hard shadow line. And that's something you want because it makes cutting and shaping light that much easier. On a cheaper version of this light, when you go to cut the light, you'll see a multiple shadow pattern on that line and it looks very unnatural and it's pretty unprofessional. So the 300X delivers a clean line that's easy to cut and shape. Now, is that worth $1,200? I think it is because it's gonna save you time and it's gonna give you a better result for your production. At a distance of six feet, we have the 300D Mark II set with the brightness to full. While squinting, let's take an exposure reading. And our exposure is F16 and 1 10 or just F16. Now we're gonna gel the 300D Mark II with Roscoe Full CTO Gel. And our exposure is F11 and 2 10 or for simplicity, just F11. Here we have the 300X set to tungsten with the brightness full at six feet away. And here I am squinting while checking that the light meter is in line with the lamp. And our exposure reading is F9.5 and 2 tenths, or for simplicity, F9.5. Not bad. So if you're like me, you're wondering, what do those results mean? It tells you that when you take the 300D Mark II and you get a reading of F16, and then you gel the light, and you're getting a reading of F11, you are losing one stop of light. Now when you compare the gelled 300D Mark II to the 300X, you're going from F11 to F9.5, and, and that's only half a stop of light. Now losing half a stop of light isn't that bad when you consider the flexibility and functionality of the 300X, as it's rated to go from 2,700 Kelvin, very warm, all the way up to 6,500 Kelvin, very cool, but more on that later. Before we get too deep into color accuracy, it's important to know what color correlated temperature is or CCT. It is a system measured in degrees Kelvin and it compares warmer orange light to cooler bluer light. And it uses candlelight at one end of the spectrum of around 2000 degrees Kelvin. And it goes all the way up to cool blue daylight that registers around 8000 degrees Kelvin on a cloudy overcast day. So in this test, I measured the color accuracy with a CCT value and also the brightness in foot candles. Keep in mind, this is at a distance of six feet. With the 300D Mark II set to full brightness, I got a CCT value of 5,254 degrees Kelvin and a foot candle reading of 831. With the 300X set to 6,500, I got a CCT value of 6,007 and a foot candle reading of 427. With the 300X set to 5,500 degrees Kelvin, I got a CCT reading of 5,143 degrees Kelvin and a foot candle reading of 502. With the 300X set to 3,200 degrees Kelvin or tungsten, I got a CCT value of 3,086 
and a foot candle reading of 403. So what does that information tell us? It tells us that the 300D Mark II is rated for 5,500 degrees Kelvin. That's their version of daylight. Now, when I took a reading, I got around 5,250 degrees, and I think that's okay. That's within my personal tolerance. The 300X, on the other hand, did not great uh, when staying accurate at the cool temperatures, but it did a pretty good job as those temperatures became warmer. What I mean by that is when I set this lamp to 6,500 degrees Kelvin and take a reading, I'm getting 6,000. Now that's off by 500 degrees. That's kind of outside my tolerance. On the flip side, that is a weird color temperature to shoot at because that's not really daylight. I mean, it can be, but generally cameras use 5,600 degrees Kelvin as baseline daylight. Now, I don't know if I'm too picky, but I give lighting manufacturers a margin of error of about 100 to 200 degrees Kelvin. And what I mean by that is, if I set the temperature of the lamp and I take a reading and I see that it is off by more than 200 degrees Kelvin than what it is I'm looking for, I'm forced to correct that light by gelling it uh, with either warm or cool gel or green or magenta, or if it's a higher end lamp, you could fine tune it and make those corrections in the light itself. Now it's time for a short sponsor break. This message is brought to you by the fine people at Tiger Bomb. Tiger Bomb. For when you want that old man at the YMCA smell at home. Robin the Tiger Bomb. Now it's important to note that both of these lights have a very high CRI and TLCI value. Now I'm not gonna go into depth what those are because that's beyond the scope of this video, but quickly, it just means how faithfully could it reproduce colors like red, yellow, blue, orange, you know, colors. So who is the 300X for? I think the 300X is for any filmmaker that is looking to save time and also values quality. Now, if you're okay with having a light that's not quite as bright as the 300D Mark II, keep in mind the 300X is bicolor. That's gonna save you a lot of time on set. With the 300X, you're not messing around with noisy gels. When you're trying to get a certain look, one thing that really peels my grapes is when a lighting manufacturer forces you to download an app to control their product. Luckily, Aperture did a fine job designing their app and I haven't had any issues with it. But if you also want to adjust the different settings, you could use the ballast. And for that, thank you. So there you have it. If you found this video to be helpful or useful, please remember to like and or subscribe. And if you wanna know anything more, just leave a comment in the section below. Thanks for watching. With the 300X set to 6,500, I got a CCT value of 6,007. You didn't think I was gonna count that shit, motherfucker! <laughs>